plus 9.8 co-functions of acute angles. Directions say to express the following expressions as a function of an acute angle less than 45 degrees. So our job is to always make sure our final answer has an angle in here that's smaller than 45. They kind of get harder as they go. Okay, so <clears throat> 351. Think about where that is on our unit circle or on a coordinate plane. 351 is not quite 360. It's like right here. Really, really close, right? And so our reference angle could be found by taking the 360 minus 351, which tells me that reference angle is nine degrees right here. And so I could write this as cosecant of nine degrees. Okay, and what I would do is always check. So remember, we don't have a button for cosecant, but the reciprocal of that is sine. So I could do one over sine of 351. I'm gonna get some kind of weird decimal. If I do that same thing with nine degrees, one over sine of nine, why didn't you get the same thing? Oh, because then nine degrees is technically whoop, up in quadrant one. But if we're talking about cosecant, which deals with sine, sine is positive when it's in quadrant one, but it's negative when it's in quadrant four, because it's a negative y here in quadrant four. So the way to make these two answers match is say, well, I really wanna make this a negative of this. So that's kind of your secret to try this. And if you don't get it to match the sign, then you just make it negative out in front. But our goal is to make this an angle less than 45. Okay, so then I could try that if you didn't believe me that I already had this answer. So now if I did a negative one over sine of nine, I get that same negative six answer. <clears throat> All right, number two, our angle here is 265. Our goal is to get it to be less than 45. Think about where that falls. 265 would be not quite 270. So something like that, okay? So I would first try to get the reference angle. So the reference angle, it's closest here to the 180. Remember, we always take it from 180 or zero or 360, never here and here on the y-axis. So I would take 265 minus 180 to get what this angle actually is. It should be what, 85? Yeah, because we said it was almost, um, it's only five degrees away from the 270. So 85 degrees is the angle here, that's my reference. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite that it's sine of 85 degrees. But we have a problem 85 is not less than 45. So we gotta figure out what can we do to play around with this so that we get um, the same number when I put it on my calculator. So then what I want you to think about is what is the um, co-function? So the, what goes with sine, remember the cosine? So it'd be cosine of, it's always our angle or sorry, 90 minus our angle. So 90 minus our angle of 85 would make cosine of five. That works, but I need to see, I could even try it from the beginning. I need to see if this and this get the same sine value. Let's check. So sine of 265, that is a negative, which makes sense because I'm down here in quadrant three. Cosine of five, five degrees is gonna be here in quadrant one. So I know that's gonna be positive, but I'll show you. So I need to make it actually be negative to match. So I'll just have to put a negative in front. So I should really like that. Okay, so kind of weird, just trying to manipulate it to write it to where it's got an angle smaller than 45. All right, number three is tangent of 628. Hope you remember coterminal angles mean I can go around the unit circle as many times as I want. So what I really wanna do is just start subtracting complete revolutions. So I'm gonna subtract 360 from that. 
okay? So then I do get a number smaller than 360. So really this is the same as tangent of 268. It's weird that it's the same digits in a different order. 268 would be again almost 270. Okay, and tangent here in this quadrant, third quadrant is positive. Just so you know, that's gonna get a positive negative or positive number on my calculator. Okay, then I would find the reference angle here. So we'd wanna subtract that from 180. And that gets 88. So that should still be the same other than, yeah, now it's gonna put me in quadrant one, but that'll be okay because they're still positive there. But that's not less than 45. So now I need to think of its co-function. Goes with tan tangent is cotangent of, it's always 90 minus my angle. And so cotangent of two is what we would get. But I would check just to make sure that tangent of 628 is the same as cotangent of two, which I'll have to do one over tangent of two. And it is, they're both positive, so that one's good. All right, and last one. This is another really big angle where it's negative, so it's actually making revolutions that go clockwise. So what I wanna do is keep adding complete revolutions to it until I get a positive number. So negative 843 plus 360 and then I'm gonna add it again, 360. I'm gonna add it again. Two thirty seven. Okay, so that would be in here somewhere. Then I would figure out what my reference angle is. So I would do 237 minus 180, and that gets me, oh, I'm sorry, my calculator's not even on the screen. That would give me 57. And so really this is the same thing as sine of 57. <clears throat> but I'm here in quadrant three where sine's negative, I'm, going to be the sine of 57 puts me in quadrant one, which is gonna be positive. <clears throat> so I know I'm gonna have to make this a negative, but I'll just do it here at the end. So then this is still bigger than 45. I wanna make it its co-function. So I'll do cosine of 90 minus 57, which is 33. And I would just check it so let's do sine of negative 843. See how that's negative? So if I do cosine of 33, it's of course positive because it's in quadrant one, so I need to make it be negative so that it matches.